I had a phone call and an email from someone today who um, he's interested in using hypnosis for uh, overcoming stage fright and social anxiety. What would you say to him as to how hypnosis would help him? Well, first of all, in that preacher, I want to say to him, how would your life improve if, in fact, you okay. didn't have stage fright? He tells me what he wants. I'd be able to get in front of the people above Whatever he tells me, I put him in hypnosis, show him already done. Uh -huh. And when he wakes up, he's not afraid of it. Okay. Because he's had success. He's seen he's success. He's seen success, yeah. yeah. I tell him that uh, he's up there and the people are listening to him because he knows about it, the subject. They don't. Uh -huh. They have a great respect for him because he knows about it. And they're trying to learn from him. And, uh, you know, he make up as you go along. Right. It, it depends a lot on what they tell me. Like they say, the, the good Lord gave us one mouth and two ears. Listen twice as much as you talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one of the things I love about your book, The Wizard Within, is it's, it's a very simple book to read yeah. and yet very powerful. And I use it as a textbook with my basic hypnosis students. And, and I tell them, you follow those, those steps in the Krasner Method, they're guaranteed success. That's correct. And I've often had uh, clients use, who wanted more information on hypnosis. It's the first and usually the only book that I recommend that they read. It's a good book and I'm very proud of it. You should be. It's now in four different languages. Wow. When was it first published? About 10 years 10 ago. 10 years ago? Okay. No problem. Must have been more than that. Must have been more than that because yeah. I've had my old hardbound for, for longer than that. Yeah. It must be. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. But it's still sells an awful lot. Yeah, it's a great book. I send them by, you know, all over the world by the case. Yeah. Now, you told me a little bit ago that you have a new book coming out? Yes. Tell us about it. I'm working on a new book and I'm calling it I Did It My Way. I Did It My Way. Yeah, thank you, Frank Sinatra. Uh, but I start the book off with the fact that this is not meant to be an autobiography uh, or anything else. It's meant to perpetuate and I hopefully perpetuate our profession. Uh -huh. I'm old now and... Uh, you are? Yeah. I'm almost 26. Almost 26. Yeah. Excellent. I'll be 80 in July. Uh, and I want to perpetuate our, uh -huh. our profession because it's been good to me and I, very, I believe in it very strongly. It can do an awful lot of help for mankind. Yes. So I said in the book, uh, in the beginning, that. I'm just books to tell you what I did. You can use any of it, all of it, or none of it. Uh -huh. What do you think? So that people have their choices. But, uh, you know, what I did, one of the things I will discuss in the book, is I was in Orange County, California, Santa Ana, actually. And I figured that was about the middle of Santa Ana, of Orange County. And I would get people from like Fullerton. That's about a good hour away. Uh -huh. So I went down to the newspaper, found out the demographics. I found out that well, it has a lot of people to get the paper, and I do a lot of advertising. So I went there, and I uh, found an office for one day a week. Okay. And the guy's a psychologist also, and I slipped his name out and my name in. Okay. I didn't have to pay any phone, any furniture. Great. Okay. I didn't use this for. Yeah. Except to send, them, except to call back yeah. my office. Uh, there was nothing, no secretary necessary, uh -huh. and uh, I gave him, I think it was a hundred dollars a week. Oh wow! That office was good for about ten, twelve thousand a month. Great, great. Learning that, and then I went to Laguna, and that was a good office too. In the end result, we had twenty-two offices. Wonderful. You and had I, twenty-two offices. Yeah. My goodness. But, uh, Do you have people working for oh, you? Sure, oh, okay. Sure. So, what would you tell clients uh, that what's the most important thing for them to know about hypnosis and why should they try it? Why should they consider it to, for their challenges, their issues in life? Well, my attitude is on it, like, let's take weight. They send you pills uh -huh. and they tell you it could be harmful. Right. Why would you take a chance? I wouldn't. And then I also bring out the fact that uh, if you send them a check, you don't know who the hell you're sending it to. When you work with a hypnosis local, you know him. Right. He's going to hold you by the hand, make sure you make it. 
Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Uh, not somebody that, uh, what are you going to do with sentiments here? And they send you medication that may be helpful. What would you tell a, a consumer that's looking for a hypnotherapist? What qualifications, what credentials, what should they look for in a, in a good hypnotherapist? See what organization he's uh, by. It could be any one of them. Okay. Uh, depending on his uh, geographical location and how long he's been in practice. And you might want to call a better business bureau. Okay, excellent. Okay. Yeah. But for the most part, I only know one or two that are not ethical. One or two hypnotherapists? Yeah. Okay. There's one or two. I won't mention names. Uh, I would like to see licensing of hypnotherapists so we can get rid of some of the guys that aren't ethical. But I say I only know two and I know about everybody in the field. So the, the unethical people, uh, again, uh, talking about consumers. Is there anything that that unethical person can make a consumer do they don't want to do? No. 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 But it can have them come ten times. Okay. When two is more than enough. Okay. So it might be more their business practices yeah. than what it is that well, they Well, again, one guy I know does hypnosis during the day and makes obscene calls at night. Oh, okay. I don't want him in my profession. No, I don't either. I don't, and that's true in any profession, whether yeah, it's a medical sure. doctor or a dentist. Or sure. There, there's and again, unethical people. I had two detectives come to me. And, my office in Santa Ana, and uh, do I know such and so? I don't know. I meet a lot of people. Yeah. Well, they got them they're trying to get them for feely touchy and hypnosis. And of course, a woman knows it. She reported it as well. She should. right. And uh, he's still in practice. Oh my goodness! But th you just touched on something important. Um, so here was this unethical person uh, who had a client and touch them inappropriately, and the woman knew it. Sure. Okay, so there's no way that a client's ever going to be, for instance, touched and not know it. No way. Uh, okay. Not even the sodium pentothal or something. Absolutely not with hypnosis. Absolutely okay. not. Okay, that's an important point for consumers to know and, and understand is we cannot do something harmful to them or make them do something harmful themselves. Because if I tell you your eyes are getting heavy, you say, no, they're not. You're not going to go there. They're not going to go there. Yeah. yeah. In fact, when, when I work with clients, you know, before I ever touch them, if I'm going to do that during a, a hypnotherapy, I tell them up front, yeah. and I have them, like, put a wrist on the arm of the chair, and I'm gonna, I would say, Dr. Krasner, I'm going to reach over and lift your yeah. left wrist, allow me to lift your, lift your left wrist. I tell them that. I give them that warning before I ever touch them. Sure. They know. And I, I'm just thinking of somebody else that I think is unethical. Uh, it's, a super, it's a super ego. He does a sway test, uh -huh. and they sway against him, and he and uh, he does it inappropriately. Okay, so a consumer would have control over that and not allow that. Slug him. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna, we're gonna slap his face. Yeah, yeah. See, and I won't even do the sway test with people. I don't do it anymore yeah. either. I, no. Yeah. So, Dr. Krasner, is there anything else that uh, you want to say to the consumers out there about hypnosis and what's important for them to know? Just don't be afraid of it. It's not the work of the devil. It was uh, accepted for the AMA in 1958. 58, yeah. And uh, the very viable therapy, or tool for therapy. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid of it. Feel free to use it, and I'm sure you'll do well. And when's your new book come out? Around Christmas. Christmas, okay. That's, it. Well, that's wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. I want an autographed copy. My pleasure. And. Um, Folks, uh, Dr. Krasner's book, The Wizard Within, is available at Hypnosis Health Info. And uh, so please uh, check it out, and it's an excellent book. I, I urge you to get it and read up about hypnosis and the powers of, of hypnosis. Dr. Krasner, thank you for being here with me today. It's a real pleasure doing this with you. Thank you for having me. You bet. Folks, this is Hypnosis Health Info, and I'm Roger Moore.